Hey, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Because I'm this is morning time here, and uh, I'm very happy and uh, glad to share with you uh, our 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 platform in detection of this COVID nineteen in New York University in Abu Dhabi. And I also like to thank the organizer to invite me for give a talk about this uh, this topic. So here I'm sharing with you our, uh, the a three step um, microflu microfluidic nanoscale qPCR for ultra sensitive detection of SARS CoV 19, uh, SARS CoV 2, sorry. Uh, I'm Xinxi, I'm, I'm, I'm working as a research scientist in the Center for Genomics and the System Biology. And uh, so since the outbreak of this uh, pandemic, um, uh, our center and the New York University are. Uh, aiming to uh, continue continuously monitoring our uh, community for the COVID-19. That's why we started uh, this project. So uh, a brief introduction about the COVID-19 detections. So the, we, we all know that the standard, um, the gold standard test for COVID-19 is a uh, 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 standard RT-PCR. However, for the standard RT-PCR, uh, the cost is very high, um, and also the there is a very consider, considerate um, um, uh, there is a consideration about the there is a concern about the false negative rate because the estimated false negative rate ranging from ten percent to twenty percent, and also the uh, also the, there is also another concern about the detection limits because we uh, the the RT-PCR is not very sensitive in detecting the very uh, the samples with very low very load, and also uh, there's another uh, another concern in the screening project uh, for COVID-19 because uh, from different study and different estimates, uh, uh, the, uh, the scientists suggest uh, for, for, from 40 to 80 of the infected uh, person are either uh, symptom uh, pre symptomatic or asymptomatic so this is a uh, this is a, a, another consideration we want to implement the uh, uh, since high sensitive and uh, low cost screening program in our university and so that um, so lastly uh, the detection of the infection is very crucial to for this control especially in this asymptomatic people population because those people are very, very unlikely to uh, voluntarily to go to the test uh, because they don't have any symptoms developed. Uh, so now uh, come to the method we are using here. Uh, we, are, we are considering to using the microfluidic systems because it's, it is a cost effective and a sensitive, uh, sensitive uh, detection method. So the, the microfluidic uh, allows to, uh, the development of a nanoscale qPCR, uh, which means we can uh, do the qPCR in the in the in the nanoscale reactions, which will reduce the uh, cost and uh, of the reagent and the sample requirement. Another advantage for the microfluidic system is uh, so for each samples we can simultaneously uh, analyze a large number of assays. And so this is a kind of highly multiplexable systems. Uh, so in, in this sense, we can we can run a lot of replicates for the same samples, and using uh, using in the nanoscale reaction. Um, so the platform we we are using is called Fluidime. Uh, the this is a a kind of uh, already developed uh, microfluidic qPCR system, which was originally used for uh, gene expression and genotyping um, uh, experiment. Uh, so we, we are trying to adopt these systems to for COVID-19 detection. And in this platform, there are a, a, a variety of chip in different format uh, you can choose to use. And the, the chip we are using is uh, uh, 192 and uh, times 24 chip. So in this chip, uh, you can load uh, up to one, 192 samples, and each sample can be analyzed against 24 different assay. So each assay means you can 
you can decide different 24 different pri uh, one different uh, one different primers in different wells so the samples can can be analyzed against 24 different um, primers so to to so to implement this system we first we uh, analyzed the sensitivity of uh, th this platform and uh, you, we, we are in this experiment we use we use the synthetic um, COVID, uh, COVID 19 RNA uh, which is the test RNA which covers the 99.9% uh, .9 of the whole genome and we also used another positive control uh, from the IDT the plasmid containing the nuclear uh, nuclear capsule genes and uh, in our in our workflows we try to compare the uh, process with or without a pre application step because we know um, from previous stu uh, uh, studies involving this limited amount of the genetic materials, a step of uh, pre application uh, can enrich the starting materials for the qPCR, which will enhance the limit of the detection. So, this pre application step simply means like we use, we, we, we perform. 20 cycles of PCR using the uh, prime using the uh, pre-designed primer to uh, to do target uh, enrichment. And here the here the our result of the of of our uh, of the the analysis of the sensitivity using the positive controls. So we so for the material we we did uh, we. We used five microliters of twist RNA or five microliters of plasmid controls, and in each samples, we in each sample we performed a tenfold series dilutions. So the concentration of the materials ranging from 50 uh, 50 k copies per microliter to 0.5 copy per microliter. And the, in, because in, in our system we can detect uh, 24 different assays for each samples. So we decide uh, we actually we run uh, we for each sample we run nine technical replicate, and uh, so for 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 so, sorry for, for each sample we use the two different probe or two different assay the N one and N two assay. So this is a, a pro, 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 uh, probe which detects the different region of the engines, and for each of for for each of this N one and N two assays. We perform the nine replicates for each of them in uh, for for every concentration, and if you look at the results um, clearly, uh, we uh, for for both twist RNA and uh, the or plasmid controls with with pre application steps, we great we significantly in, increased the detection limit in our system by at least uh, one thousand fold. And uh, so, with without pre application in the nanoscale qPCR, we can only detect the viral copy around uh, 5,000 uh, per microliter. And uh, you can see from this data, not every replicate will work. Uh, however, for we, when we included the pre application step, we, we were able to detect uh, the viral uh, the samples um, even. Uh, at uh, at the, the, the 0.5 copy per microliters, uh, this concentration, and at least half of the uh, half of the replicate will work in this uh, in this in these conditions, and the, the same a very similar results were observed uh, for the plasmid controls compared to the twist RNA. So after after we know that like, okay, this system is uh, very sensitive and uh, to detect very low very copy numbers, so we want to validate this results uh, using the clinic. So then we 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 we, we, are co we collaborated with a cl clinical di diagnostic lab in Abu Dhabi, and uh, so uh, so for this uh, for these samples we we asked for half uh, 91 samples 91 positively uh, diagnosed samples and another half is uh, negative diagnosed samples and for these samples we perform so we first performed heat inactivation to reduce the chance of the uh, reduce the risk of the infection uh, of the people handling these samples 
And then we performed the RNA extraction using the automated um, cooking Elmer systems. Then we, we, do, we, we did the reverse transcription and the pre-amplification, and then uh, use uh, the full time systems to, to detect um, uh, the, the, the presence of the COVID-19 virus. And the, for, the, for the assays, we are using three different assays, the N1, N2, and RP. The RP, is, the RP gene is uh, the control for the human, human tissues, which is a quality control. And since we have, we, we now have three different assays and we, uh, probe, and we have 24 IC capacity. So we, we perf for each sample, we perform the nine replicates for N1 and N2 um, uh, assays. And we, for the RP quality control, we also included six different, uh, six, six replicates for, for it. And in each of the uh, of the PCR plate, we also included the negative control and positive control to make sure we don't have cross contaminations. Um, and uh, so, for these samples, after we we run the sample with uh, using the using the chip, we we have we we find some inconsistent samples, which means uh, the. The, the replicates, the, the CQ values or the CT value among the replicates have, uh, have, have a very large variations. And then we troubleshoot, when, when we look back, we found that this is due to uh, the loading problem because when you have a, uh, created a bubble, when you load the sample into the chip, um, the, some of the nanoscale reaction will not get enough of the, the materials. So we, we removed some of those uh, inconsistent samples from our data analysis. So after we removed the inconsistent sample, the first step we, in our analysis is to, to get a valid, validated sample by looking at the RP genes. And all the, all the samples have the valid RP gene detection, which means the RNA extraction and the sample are good. And then we, if, and then in our, our analysis, if the either N1 or N2 has been detected, we consider this as a positive sample in our analysis. And if both of N1 and N2 probe are not detected, we consider this sample are negative in our uh, data analysis. So since this sample has been pre-diagnosed, so then we can basically categorize them um, based on the clinical diagnosis and our, uh, our microfluidic classifications. And here the table shows you the, the results. So for this 87 uh, consistent uh, samples, we, we, so we, we detected 86 of uh, them are positive in our, uh, in our uh, microfluidic analysis. And we only missed one of them. And we believe this one is, be, uh, we, we believe that because which, when we checked the CT value by the clinical diagnosis for these samples, it is really very high CT values. We think maybe because during the transportation or the heat inactivation, this sample has some degradation which failed to be detected. And most interestingly, for the, 20, for the 84 uh, consistent negative samples, we can we detected the uh, 17 of, out of them to be uh, positive, and uh, so also for this post, for, so for this potentially false negative samples, we we detected at least nine replicates um, have a valid CT values uh, in the samples. So we have a, a very high confidence that these samples do contain um, uh, COVID-19 material uh, genetic materials. And we also try to compare our results with the clinic, uh, the results uh, get uh, obtained in a clinical lab. So here, for example, first on the left panel, you can see the for for the both for the positive samples, we see like the the, the microfluidic qPCR results um, have a very uh, high consistency with the clinical diagnostic result in terms of the CQ value because. Uh, the, the samples with a high CQ, CQ value in their, in their hand are also de detected at a very high CT value here. So the difference between CT values sim simply means because we performed a, a pre-application step. That's why we, for every sample, we generally have a very low, lower CQ value. 
And if we look, uh, if we look at the uh, the CT the CT values of the uh, potentially false negative samples, and and uh, when we compare this those samples with the true positive samples, with we we observe that the, all these samples have a tend to have a very low uh, CT value, and if we use uh, the linear regression of our positive control because we, we include a different concentration of the plasmid controls to um, in order to estimate the value load. Uh, we observe that indeed in, in this estimation we also we are also able to detect the the samples uh, with less less than one copy per microliter of the uh, of the uh, genetic materials. And so they, therefore we believe like um, we believe our, our system are able to not only detect the very low copy number in the in positive controls, they, it can also detect the in the swap, swap samples. And, uh, and also when we estimated the when we when we asked when you estimated the false negative rate, it's around 18 um, among all the negative samples. So this is kind of uh, consistent with uh, uh, estimated uh, numbers in the public published literature. And uh, we also try to, another thing we also try to do is we want to see whether we can reproducibly detect these low, very low samples. So that's why we performed uh, another two diff in independent experiments with this, uh, this potentially false positive uh, samples. And in our second and the third experiment, we lose to some. We lose the detection of some of these samples. We think because the freeze cycles can lead to degradation of the, the materials. But however, uh, uh, among a lot of them, still we can detect them to be positive. So therefore, we think uh, we believe our our method can reproducibly um, uh, uh, detect the low very low sample. And lastly, we also compared uh, the, the, the correlation between the uh, CT value of the RP gene and the N gene. Because in our system, we analyzed this uh, N gene and RP gene from exactly the same, uh, same samples. And, uh, so uh, firstly, when we compared the positive and the negative samples, we didn't see a significant difference in the distribution of the RP genes, which means the negative sample are not due to the inadequate uh, sampling of the human tissue. And it also, if it, the correlation analysis, uh, in the correlation analysis, we didn't see like very strong correlation between the RP uh, gene CT and the N gene CTs. So this means uh, also uh, the, the amount of human tissue you sampled does not contribute uh, uh, too much to the detected viral, viral, viral load, and also for the for the false for the false negative samples here, we we do, even though they have a low uh, N gene CT value, but the 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 RP gene values are within the middle range of the whole of all the samples we analyzed, which again suggests that this this false negative sample are not due to uh, poor uh, the poor quality of the samples. So and uh, so so at the at this moment we have we have generated uh, we have validated our systems and we we are not uh, building up uh, a platform to what we we are trying to automate the whole whole system. This is because we we find we find that uh, if we do we load the sample manually. This, this, there, are, there are a lot of inconsistent results due to the bubbling issues. That's why we, uh, we, we are trying to take advantage of our, the automated system in our, our lab. So we, now we are using the, we have established a protocol to use the Bravo liquid handler uh, to load the sample into a chip. This is now gives us more consistent results among the samples. Also, we have we have now generated a database uh, to record every step uh, from the RNA extraction towards the chip, and so every step can be traced back, and then the 
after we run each chip, we, we can automatically get the uh, reports for the for each sum, uh, for each reactions. And lastly, because we uh, because we have for each sample we have uh, twenty four different assays, so each chip we generate like more than four thousand PCR reaction results. Uh, it, it it's impossible to uh, read uh, read the results and uh, and to uh, generated the status by human. So that's why we also have developed an algorithm to automatic uh, uh, to do the QC for each of the plates to assess the positive controls and the negative controls. And also uh, we can uh, automatically report the status of each sample based on the numbers and the, the numbers and the variations and the RP genes to uh, to define which, which sample is valid or invalid, whether it's positive or negative. And then, so that's all we have accomplished now for this project. And the, so current work and for the current work and future work, we are also trying to uh, establish what, uh, the, the assay, uh, the testing with saliva samples in collaboration with other um, clinic lab here. And, and uh, more importantly, we are also applying for the, to have applied for the diagnostic license from the Department of Health, so we can basically um, have a valid test result for our community. And uh, finally, I, I have to, I, have, I want to thank for all the participants and all different parties involved in this project, because this is a very collaborative work uh, among different lab and centers in NYUAB and uh, this uh, project has been uh, supervised by different uh, PIs uh, as a steering committee and we have a very excellent team which working on different aspects including lab setup or lab automation and database uh, building and also the uh, wet lab um, uh, the, the, data, the wet lab work. So that's all I want to share with you today and uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.